हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई वेलकम यू टू अवर चैनल उल्लास कुमार गोखले इन टूडेज वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद द सीरीज ऑफ वीडियोज फॉर द सब्जेक्ट कंप्यूटर आर्किटेक्चर एंड ऑर्गेनाइजेशन और सिंपली कंप्यूटर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एज पर द न्यू सिलेबस इन दिस सब्जेक्ट फर्स्टली वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड द टर्म्स कंप्यूटर आर्किटेक्चर एंड कंप्यूटर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड द डिफरेंस बिटवीन देम और the relation between them then only it will be possible for us to understand the subject in details so we'll begin this with the agenda first is introduction so here we'll just introduce the computer system then next we'll go through the computer system terms and then we'll define the computer architecture and computer organization after that we'll study the architectural issues and the organizational issues then we'll study some of the computer systems with the same architecture but difference in organization so that you'll understand it in a better way then next we'll study the relationship between architecture and organization in microcomputers and lastly we'll summarize this all so let us begin with the introduction so a computer system like any system consists of an interrelated set of components so in case of computer system we have the processor memory and input output device so they will be connected to each other now the system is best characterized in terms of structure the way in which components are interconnected here by structure we mean the components how they are connected to each other that will define the structure of the computer system and the function that is the operation of the individual component so this is how the computer system will be studied then furthermore a computer's organization is hierarchical so here you have to understand this hierarchical means there is a hierarchy in its organization so each major component can be further described by decomposing it into a major sub component and describing their structure and function so this will be continued from one level to other that is the hierarchy then let us go to the next that is the computer system terms for the first term is computer system so here the computer system we already we have discussed that it consists of processor memory and input output so here the processor is nothing but the central processing unit so if you take the case of microcomputers the cpu is a microprocessor whereas in other systems it may not be a microprocessor then next term is processor the so processor is the central processing unit it will have the control unit then set of registers then arithmetic and logic unit alu and the instruction execution unit so this instruction execution unit may have the instruction register instruction decoder for execution of the instruction then the next term is control unit so control unit provides control signals for the operation and coordination of all processor components so anything you want to do so the signals will be provided by the control unit now for the execution of instruction traditionally a macro programming implementation has been used so in macro programming implementation we have the control memory then macro instruction sequencing logic and registers so one by one the instructions will be sequenced and executed more recently macro has been less prominent but remains an important implementation technique so that's why in the subject further we'll study this macro programming in details then let us go to the next part that is computer architecture so computer architecture is concerned with the structure and behavior of the computer as seen by the user so when the user looks at the computer he sees some structure maybe in terms of hardware and software so computer architecture refers to those attributes of the system 
visible to a programmer or to say those attributes that have a direct impact on the logical execution of a program. When we are executing a program, that means the attributes like instruction set or number of bits used to represent various data types. For example, we have the numbers, characters. So, whatever number of bits are there for these data types, that will be a one of the attributes or the input output mechanism and techniques for addressing memory. So generally the different addressing modes of the processor that will be uh, defined in the architecture. Then architectural design of a computer system is concerned with the specification of various functional modules such as processors and memories and structuring them together into a computer system. So these functional modules, the processor and memories, they are structured together into a computer system. So that is the architectural. Then let us go to the computer organization. The computer organization is concerned with the way the hardware components operate and the way they are connected together to form the computer system. So mainly here, uh, it is concerned with the different buses or the connection of the different components. Then computer organization refers to the operational unit and their interconnection that realize the architectural specific. So whatever architecture specifications are there, as per that, the it is the computer organization which will define the interconnection. Organizational attributes include those hardware details transparent to the programmer such as control signals, interfaces between the computer and peripheral. So when we are interfacing the different peripherals to the computer, at that time we need the different signal. So those signals are called as the control signal. And uh, when we are interfacing the memory, at that time we will have to make use of the control signals related to the memory and the memory technology which is used whether it is static RAM or dynamic RAM or uh, in terms of if you say the ROM it is electrically erasable EE ROM or EEP ROM so that is how the organization will define all these things then let us go to the next part that is architectural issues versus organizational issues. Let us understand this with an example. It is an architectural design issue whether a computer will have a multiply instruction. For example, in 8085, there is no multiply instruction. Whereas in 8086, we have the multiply instruction. So it is an organizational issue whether that instruction will be implemented by a special multiply unit or by a mechanism that makes repeated use of the add unit of the system. So when we want to multiply, we can do repeated addition or we can have separate hardware multiplier which will do the multiplying. So it will be a organizational issue. Then organizational decision may be based on the anticipated frequency of use of the multiply instruction that is how many times the multiply instruction is being used and the relative speed of the two approaches that means whether we are using the hardware multiplier or we are doing it with the help of repeated addition we have the adder and that will be done with the help of that and the cost of physical size of the special multiply unit so here when we have the special multiply unit, the size and the cost is also has to be considered when taking that decision. Then let us go to the next same architecture but with difference in organization. Here we are going to see some of the computer systems with the same architecture with difference in organization. Many computer manufacturers offer a family of computer models all with the same architecture with with the difference in organization. 
Furthermore, a particular architecture may span many years and encompass a number of different computer models, the organization changing with changing technology. So let us understand this with an example. A prominent example of both this phenomena is the IBM system that is 370 architecture. So this architecture was first introduced in 1970 and included a number of models. So the models were different in terms of cost and the speed. So the customer with the modest requirement would buy a cheaper lower model and if the demand increase later upgrade to a more expensive faster model without having to abandon the software that had been already developed. So that's why the different models of the computer were supplied by the manufacturer IBM so that it is convenient for the users. Then over the years, IBM has introduced many new models with improved technology to replace the older models, offering the customer a greater speed, low cost or both. So in this way, the new models retained the same architecture so that the customer's software investment was protected. Because if the architecture is same, the software which was developed that can work with the new technology. Then the next is relationship between architecture and organization in a microcomputer. So here uh, we first understand what is microcomputer. The computer which has the microcursor as a central processing unit, they are called as the microcomputer. So in a class of computers called microcomputers, the relationship between architecture and organization is very close because directly the architecture of the processor will affect the organization. So changes in technology not only influence the organization but also results in the introduction of more powerful and more complex architecture. As we have gone through this, the first computer was based on 8088 microsystem. So that was the first IBM PC. Then later on it changed to 80286, then 80386, then 80486, then Pentium like that. The processors have changed. So the processor with the complex architecture were designed for that. So generally there is a less of requirement for the generation to generation compatibility for this smaller machine. So there is no need of compatibility from one generation to another. So there is a more interplay between organization and architectural design decision. So that's why as per the architecture, the organization can be changed accordingly. Then next we come to the summary. So here the emphasis is perhaps more on the side of organization because the organization it will change with the technology. However, because the computer organization must be designed to implement a particular architectural specification, a thorough treatment of organization requires a detailed examination of architecture as well. So that's why you have to study both the architecture as well as the organization. So with this, we come to the end of this lecture. Now, if you have any questions, you can contact me on Facebook. Twitter, Gmail or Instagram. Then if you like the video, press the like button, share with your friends and subscribe to our channel Ullas Kumar Gokhale. And don't forget to press the bell icon so that you get notifications for my future videos. Then thanks for watching. Have a nice day.